Live from Austin, Texas, it's The Cube. Covering South by Southwest 2017. Brought to you by Intel. Now, here's John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live here in the Cube coverage of South by Southwest. We're at the Intel AI Lounge. Hashtag Intel AI. And the theme is AI for social good, so if you really support that, go on Twitter and, and use the hashtag Intel AI and support our cause. I'm John Furrier with Silicon Angle. I'm here with Robert Scoble at Scobleizer, um, just announcing this week the new formation of his new company, the Transformation Group. I've known Robert for over, over 12 years now, um, influencer, futurist. You've been out and about with the virtual reality, augmented reality, you're wearing the products. Yep. You've been all over the world, you were just at Mobile World Congress, been following you. You are the canary in the coal mine, poking out all the new technology. Well, the next, the next five years, you're going to see some mind-blowing things. In fact, just the next year, I predict that this thing is going to turn into a three-ounce pair of glasses that's going to put virtual stuff on top of the world. So think about coming back to South by Southwest next year, you're wearing a couple of pairs of glasses, and you are you going to see blue lines on the floor taking you to your next meeting, or uh, TV screens up here so I can watch the cube while I walk around the streets here. It's going to be a lot of crazy stuff. So we've been on our opening segment, we talked about it, we just had a segment on social good around volunteering, but what the theme is coming out is this counterculture where there's now the humanization aspect, they yeah. call it the consumerization of IT in the past, but in the global world, the human involvement is now has these immersion, immersion experiences with technology. Yeah. And, and now it's colliding with impacting lives. Well, absolutely true. It, you know, this is a Microsoft HoloLens, first of all, and HoloLens puts virtual stuff on top of the real world, but at home I have an HTC Vive and I, I have an Oculus Rift for VR, and VR is that immersive media. This is augmented reality, or what we call mixed reality, where the images are put on top of the world so I can see yep. uh, something pop off of you. In fact, last year at, uh, at South by, I met a guy who started a company called iFluence, and he showed me a pair of glasses, and you look at a bottle like this, and a little menu pops off the side of the bottle, tells you how much it is, tells you what's in the bottle, um, and lets you buy new versions of this bottle, like you know, a case of it and have it shipped to my house, all with my eyes. That's coming out from Google next year, so. So the, the big thing on the immersion, the AR, I mean, you look at what's going on in societal impact. What are the things that you see? Obviously, we were seeing at Mobile World Congress, the four pillars yeah. came out. Autonomous vehicles is game changing. Smart yes. cities, media and entertainment, the world that we know close to our world, and then smart home. Oh yeah. And smart home's been around for years, but autonomous vehicles truly is a societal change. Yes. I mean, the and car is a data center now, it's got, Experiences. And there's, and there's three new startups you should pay attention to in the new cars that are coming in the next 18 months. Quantergy is one. They make a new kind of LiDAR, a new uh, sensor. In fact, there's sensors here that are sensing the world as I walk around and seeing all the surfaces, right? The car works the same way. It has to see ahead to know that there's a kid in front of your car. The car needs to stop, right? And Quantergy is making a focusable semiconductor LiDAR yeah. that's going to be one to watch. And then there's a new kind of brain, a new kind of AI coming. And uh, Deep Scale is the one that I'm watching. The Deep Scale brain uses a new third company called Luminar Technologies, which is making a new kind of 3D map of the world. So think about going down the street. This new map is going to know every pothole, every piece of paint, every sign, every bridge on, on the street. And it's going to, um, the, the brain, the AI, is going to compare the virtual map to the real map, to the real world, and see if there's anything new, like a kid crossing across the street, right? Then the car needs to do something and make a new decision, right? So three new startups are gonna really change the car. But the reason I'm so focused on mixed reality is mixed reality is the user interface for the self-driving car, for the smart city, for the internet of things, fields in your farm or whatnot, and for your robot, and for your drone, right? You're gonna have drones that are gonna know this uh, space, and you can fly it right, I've seen drones already in the R&D labs at, at Intel, you can fly them straight at the wall, it'll stop an inch from the wall because it knows where the wall is. Because it's got the software, it's got the sensors, the internet of things. We are putting out a new research report at Wikibon called IOT and P. Yep. Internet, things, and people. And this is the key point, I want to get your thoughts on this because you, you nailed a bunch of things and I want you to define 
for the folks watching what you mean by mixed reality, because this is not yeah. augmented reality. Well, it You're is. You're talking about mixed reality. It is augmented reality. It's but just, why mixed reality? We came up with a new term called mixed reality because on our, we have augmented reality on phones. But the, the augmented reality you have on phones, like the Pokemons that we've been talking about, they're, they're not locked to the world. So when I'm wearing this, there's a, actually a shark right here uh, on this table, and it's locked on the table, and I can walk around that shark, and it seems like it's sitting here just like this bottle of water is sitting on the table, right? This is mind-blowing, and now we can actually change the table itself and make it something else. Yeah. Because every pixel in this space is going to be mapped by these new sensors okay. on. So let's take that to the next level. You had mentioned earlier, you just in your in your um, in your in your talk just now about user interface yeah. to, to cars, smart. You didn't say user interface to cars. You didn't say just smart. You said you kind of implied. I think you meant it's interface to all the environments. Yes. Can you expand on your thoughts on that? You're going to be wearing glasses that look like yours in about a year. Much smaller than this. This is too dorky and too big for an average consumer to wear around, right? But if they're three ounces and they look something like what you're wearing Some right nice now. nice Ray-Bans, yep. And they're coming. I've seen them in the R&D labs. They're coming from a variety of different companies. Google, Facebook, uh, Loomis, uh, Magic Leap, all sorts of different companies are coming with these lightweight, small glasses. You're going to wear them around. And it's going to lay interface elements on everything, right? So think about my watch, right? Why, if I do this gesture, why do I have to look at a little tiny screen right here? Why isn't the whole screen of my calendar pop up right here, yeah. right? They could do that, yeah. that's a gesture. This computer in here can sense that I'm doing a gesture and can put a new user interface on yeah. top of that. Now, I, I, I've seen tractors that uh, have sensors in them. Now, using a glass like this, it shows me what the pumps are doing in the tractors, right? on the glasses. I can walk around a factory floor and see the sensors in the pipes on the factory floor and see the sensors in my uh, electric motors on the factory, right? All with a one so pair of This is why glasses. the Intel AI thing interests me, this whole theme, because you, what you just described requires data, right? So you, one, you need to have the data available. Yes. The data's got to be frictionless. It's got to be, can't be locked in some schema, as they say in the database world. It's got to yep. be free to be addressed by software. Yes. You need software that understands what that is, and then you need horsepower, compute power, chips, to make it all happen. Yeah, think about a new kind of TV that's coming soon. I'm going to look at a TV like this one, a physical TV, but it's too small and it's in the wrong angle. So I can just grab the image off the TV and virtually move it over here, and I'll see it, nobody else will see it, but I can put that TV screen right here so I can watch my TV the way I want to watch it, right? All right, so this is all sci-fi great stuff, which actually- It's not sci-fi, it's, it's, it's here it's, already. Let me, you just don't have it, I have it. <laughs> you can say it's kind of dorky, but I'm not going to say you're a dork, because I know you. No, but it's, it's too- But it's, it's not, it's too not mainstream, years away. To mainstream America, mainstream world, yeah. it's, it's a bit sci-fi, but yes. people are grokking this now. Certainly the younger generation yes. that are digital native, all are coming in post 9-11. They understand that this is a native world for them. Yes. And they take to it like a fish to water. Yes. Us old guys, but we are the software guys, we're the tech guys. So taking it to the mainstream America, what has to happen in your mind to mainstream this stuff? We, we Obviously self-driving cars is coming, it's going to be fleets first and then cars. We have to take people on a journey away from computing like this or computing like this to computing on glasses. So how do we do that? Well, you have to show deep utility, and these glasses show that. Wearing a HoloLens, I see aliens coming out of the walls, yeah. blowing holes in this physical wall. Like right now? Yeah. <laughs> what are you smoking? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing yet. <laughs> no. But, and then I can shoot them with my fingers because the virtual things are mixing with the real world. It's a mind-blowing so experience. So do, do you see this being programmed by users or being a, a library of stuff? Or? Some are going to be programmed by users, like Minecraft is today on a phone or on a tablet, right? right? Um, some are, most of it is going to be built by developers, so there's a huge opportunity coming for developers. You're going to hear... Talk about the developer angle because that's yeah. huge. We're seeing massive uh, changes in the developer ecosystems. Certainly open source is going to be around for a while, but what trends do you see in uh, open source? And I mean, I'm sorry, in the developer community with this new overlay of 5G connectivity, um, all this amazing cloud technology. There's a new 3D map coming, and it's a slam-based map. 
So think about this space, this physical space, right? These sensors that are on the front of these new kinds of glasses that are coming out are going to sense the world in a new way and put it into a, a new kind of database. One that we can put programmatic information into. So think about me walking around a shopping mall. I walk in the front door of a shopping mall, I cross a geofence in that shopping mall, and the glasses then show me uh, information about the yeah. shopping mall because it knows it's in the shopping mall. And then I say, hey, hey, Intel, can you show me, or Siri or Alexa or Cortana or whoever you're Mostly talking to. Mostly powered by Intel. Right? <laughs> Most of it is powered by Intel because Intel's in all the data centers and all, all these glasses, right? In fact, Intel is the... Uh, manufacturer of the, of the new kind of controller that's inside this new HoloLens. And when, when I ask it, I can say, hey, where's the blue jeans in this shopping mall? And all of a sudden, three new pairs of blue jeans will appear in the air, virtual blue jeans, and I'll say, uh, this one's a Guess, this one's a Levi's, this one's a whatever. And I'll say, oh, I want the Levi's 501, and I'll click on it, and a blue line will appear on the floor, taking me right to the pet product. Uh, you know, the shopping mall companies already have the data. They already know where the jeans are in the shopping mall, and these glasses are going to take you right to it. I'll say, Robert, so AI is the theme, it's hot. Yes. But AI is a, I mean, I love AI, and don't get me wrong, AI is a mental model in my mind for people to kind of figure out that this futuristic world's here, and it's moving fast. But machine learning is a big part of what AI is yes. becoming. So a, machine learning is becoming automated. Talk about well, it's becoming a lot faster. Faster and available. Because it used to take 70,000 images of a, something like a bottle to train the system that this is a bottle versus a, a, a can, right? Yeah. Bottle versus can. And the scientists have figured out how to make it two images now. So all I need is two images of something new to train the system that we have a bottle versus a can. And also so, the fact that compute's available. Yes. There's more and more faster processors yes. that this stuff can get crunched. The data can be crunched. Absolutely, but it's the data that trains these things, right? So let's talk about the bleeding edge of AI. I've seen uh, AIs coming out of Israel that are just mind-blowing. They take a 3D image of this table, they separate everything into an object, right? So this is an object, it's separate from the table that it's on. And it then uh, lets me do AI lookups on the object. So this is a Roxanne bottle of water, right? The 3D sensor can see the logo in this bottle of water, can look to the cloud, find all sorts of information about the manufacturer here, what the product is, what, all sorts of stuff. It might even pull down a CAD drawing of like the computer that you're on, pull down a CAD drawing, overlay it on top of the real product, and now we can put videos on the back of your Macintosh or something like that, right? You can do mind-blowing stuff coming soon. That's one angle. Let's talk about medical. In Israel, I went to the MRI manufacturers. They're training the MRI machines to recognize cancers. So you're going to be lying in an MRI machine, and it's going to tell you whether you, or tell the people around the machine whether you have cancer or not, and which cancer. And it's already faster than the doctor, cheaper than the doctor, and obviously doesn't need a doctor. And that's going to lead into a whole discussion. And the CRISPR, on, the CRISPR thing. This is these oh. are societal problems, by the way. This is the the policy is the issue, not the technology. How do you deal with the the ethical issues? Around ethical gene sequencing and oh well, that's gene whole, editing and that's a whole other thing. I'm just recognizing yeah, yeah. whether you have cancer on this example. <laughs> but now we need to talk about jobs. How do we make new jobs in massive quantities? Because we're going to decimate a lot of people's jobs with these new technologies. So we need to talk about that probably on a future cube. But I think yep. mixed reality is going to create millions of jobs because think about this bottle. In the future, I'm going to be wearing a pair of glasses. And Skrillex is going to jump out of the bottle, onto the table, give a performance, and then jump back into the bottle. Yeah. That's only four years away, according to the, uh, to the guy who's running a new startup called 8i. He's making a new volumetric camera. It's a camera with 40 or 50 uh, cameras and You don't like around. Skrillex? Martin Garris can come on. Yeah, yeah, whatever you want. <laughs> Remember, this media is going to be personalized to your liking. Spotify is already doing that. Yeah. Do you listen to Spotify? Yeah, of course. Do you listen to the Discovery Weekly feature yeah. on that? You should. It's magical. It brings you the best music based on what you've already listened to, and it's personalized. So your Discovery Weekly on your phone is different 
than the Discovery Weekly on my phone, and that's run by AI. So these are new collaborative filters. This is all about software. Yeah. All about software. Okay. Software and, and a little bit of hardware, because you still need to sense the world in a new way. You're going to get new watches this year that have many more sensors that are looking in your veins for yeah. whether you have blood, high blood pressure, whether you're uh, uh, in shape for running. By the way, you're going to have an artificial yeah. coach when you go running in the morning, running next to you, just like well, you know, I mean, when you see Mark Zuckerberg, he can afford to pay a real coach. I can't, <laughs> right? So he has a real coach running with him every morning and, uh, and saying, hey, we're going to do some interval training today. We're going to do some sprints you know, to get your cardio up. Well, now the glasses are going to do that for you. Yeah. It's going to say, hey, let's do some intervals today. It's a running bot. And you're going to wear the watch that's going to sense your uh, blood pressure and your, and your heart rate and the artificial coach running next to you. And that's only two years away. Yeah. Of course, great stuff. Robert Scoble, South by Southwest. I'll give you a quick one. Well, we got to close the segment. Yeah. Quickly, how has South by changed in 10 years? Oh. And well, 20. I've been coming for 20 years. I've been coming since it was 500 people, and now it's 50,000, 70,000 people. It's crazy. How's it changed this year? What's the big, what's going this on this year? This is the VR year. This is the VR year. Every year we have a year, right? There was the Twitter year. There was the Foursquare year. This is the VR year. So if you're over at Capital Factory, you're going to see dozens of VR experiences. In fact, my uh, co-author is playing The Mummy right now. I, I had to come on your show. I got the show. <laughs> Short straw, <laughs> <laughs> sit in the sun, and all instead right. of playing some cool stuff. But there's VR all over the place. Next year is going to be the mixed reality year, and this is a predictor of the next year that's coming. All right, Robert Scoble, futurist here on the Cube. Also, congratulations on your new company that you're going out on your own, Transformation Group. Yeah, we're this, helping brands figure out this mixed reality world. Congratulations, of Thanks. course. Uh, as always, it is a transformational time in the in the history of our world, and certainly the computer industry is going to a whole nother level that we haven't seen before, and this is going to be exciting. Thanks for spending the time with us. Thanks. This is theCUBE here live. It's South by Southwest, special CUBE coverage, sponsored by Intel, and the hashtag is Intel AI. If you like it, tweet us at Twitter. We'll be happy to talk to you on, online. I'm John Furrier, more after this short break. <laughs>